Welcome back. I'm Erin Moore, and this is part two of my screen printing class in the darkroom. We're going to take the films that we just printed out previously in part one of the class, and we're going to, we're going to use them to expose these images onto a screen. Remember, each screen is one color in your design. So we have a screen here that we're gonna use for our design today. It's a 180. Um, that's a good middle of the road mesh to start with. Uh, mesh count refers to the size of the mesh. The lower the number, the, the wider the mesh, the wider the holes in the mesh. So a 180 is a wide enough mesh, a wide enough hole to get a good coat of ink down without uh, too much strength on press, uh, but it also holds a, a pretty fair amount of detail. Uh, so this is, a, this is a good mesh count to use, to keep around. This is a scoop coater. It's just a tool to get the emulsion onto the screen in a very uniform and even way. And let's, let's begin. When you first get your emulsion, come in a gallon like this. Um, your emulsion may, may come unsensitized, um, and you'll know that it's not sensitized to light because it will have what we call diazo next to it. Um, diazo is, is something that you're gonna add in when you get it. Um, and that's what sensitizes it to light. If that's the method that you have, you'll just um, take your bottle of diazo, fill it up with water to where it says, give it, give it a good shake, 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 shake until it's all fully dissolved. And then you'll stir it into your whole body of emulsion, making sure to reach down deep um, with that spatula um, to make sure that it's fully, fully incorporated. After that's done, um, you put your lid on it and give it Give it a few hours to kind of release all that air that you worked into it as you were mixing it. Um, if your emulsion doesn't come with diazo, that's okay. It's been sensitized um, before it got to you, and that would be your photopolymer emulsion. And you're still gonna wanna give it a good stir when it gets to you. And I'm gonna find my spatula to do that. So let me give this emulsion a good stir before we get going. So after you've let it rest, you're gonna come back and you're ready to coat your screens. You're just gonna pour emulsion into your scoop coater. Um, just kind of starting at one end and moving around here, let it fall in. Typically when you're coming to coat screens, you're gonna be mo coating more than one screen at a time. So you'll get a nice full scoop coater uh, because you don't wanna run out of emulsion halfway up your screen. That would make an unusable screen. Uh, because you would have variable, you could just coat it again, but then you'd have variable layers and thicknesses of emulsion on the screen, which makes for a variable exposure time. So that makes that screen unusable. Um, you want a very uniform, totally even layer of emulsion on the surface of your screen. So your scoop coater has two sides to it, um, a sharp side, and a rounded side. The rounded side is used for the lower screen mesh counts. It's gonna put a little bit more emulsion on your screen as you coat it. So we're gonna use it for our lower screen meshes um, that have the larger holes in the mesh, just to give a little thicker layer on there. And then our sharper side is gonna be for our higher mesh counts, um, say like 150, 160 and above. Uh, we're using a 180 today, so we are gonna use the sharper side here. You're gonna wanna start on the shirt side or the substrate side of your screen. It's also called the back of the screen um, for your first layer of emulsion. You're gonna create a seal there and just let the emulsion fall against the screen at this point. You're not letting any of it escape. And then you're gonna tilt it back a little bit and drag it up the screen. And then stop about an inch from the top, tilt it back and let it all fall in. And then you're just gonna shear that edge off. So we've coated one side of the screen. You can coat the other side of the screen to build up your stencil a little bit. Um, if you have like a really thick ink, um, you might want to create a, you know, a space for that ink to fall through onto your substrate by making a 
larger stencil or thicker stencil using more emulsion. If you do that, that's great. Um, you can coat the inside of your screen as well. You wanna always end up coating with the inside. So you can build up your stencil, you can even um, dry it in between to make it th thicker, but your last coat should always be on the inside of your screen. After you coat your screens with emulsion, you wanna dry them the other way, this way. And that just makes it so the emulsion kind of, almost imperceptibly, but kind of rests on the substrate side or the canvas or shirt side of your screen. And it could be like a safeguard against a stencil that might be breaking down on press. All right, we're in the dark room now. Um, we have our film um, and a coated screen. So we just kind of want to place this right in the middle of the screen. This is a 20 inch frame. Um, so 10 inches is going to be our center mark. So we're going to move the registration mark right to 10. Um, and then we're going to do our top one. And slide it over there. I like to double check a lot because um, making really precise measurements just makes your life easier all the way around. Uh, so it's important to do that. So now we have it centered. We're going to move it up here. This mark on the T-square is where this image will work best out on the press, right? And when you get to know your press and your equipment, um, you will dial in these measurements and know exactly where you need to put it so that when you get out to press, it lands in exactly the right place on your palette. So we're gonna move this film up a little bit, trying so hard to keep it centered. And when we get this guy right exactly where we want him, we will just tape it right on. So now we're just going to set it right onto our exposure unit. Um, our light, this is a light box with a vacuum top. Um, our light is coming from the bottom, so as you can see our film is in between the screen and the light source, so it blocks uh, the light from hitting the emulsion. We're just going to pull this top down, lock it in. Now this is a vacuum top. Um, what, this, what this does is it creates positive contact uh, between the, your screen mesh, your film, and the glass on top of the light source. It kind of just squeezes it all together, um, so no light is finding any spaces in there to bounce around and create um, uncrisp lines or details in your image. So we're just going to push start here. And now let's go to the washout booth. This screen has been exposed. Make sure you take your film off. You want a way to organize and keep track of your films. Now that we've exposed our screen, we're gonna take it to the washout area and get some water on it. All right, this is our washout booth area. We just exposed our screen um, for one color in our design. And now we're gonna rinse out our image. So I'm just gonna get both sides of the screen wet. And as you can see, I just put a little bit of water on both sides and I'm already seeing my image here. The emulsion's not sticky at all. It feels like a pretty um, solid stencil here. Looks like we got a good exposure. I like to just um, before I leave the dark room, um, just kind of give it a good inspection. Make sure that you haven't lost any detail and also that you've gotten all of, all of the emulsion out of the mesh. Looks good. We're going to take it to our drying rack now. All right, so we just rinsed out our stencil on our screen and it's ready to dry. Uh, so we're going to slide it into a drying rack here. Um, when you're drying screens after they have water on them, um, you want to dry them with the frame down just to give the water a chance to drip out there. Um, you can also add a fan or some kind of air movement around your screen. I wouldn't blast a fan, fan right out there because it's going to kick up dust and you don't want any dust to, to be on your screen. You're ready to take your screens out to press and put your image back together. Let's go to the press 
and start printing.